at a moment in time when we're seeing fewer and fewer queer spaces where queer community can gather publicly, the closing of gay bars, of queer bars, of dyke bars, and maybe it's due to the internet, maybe it's due to the expensive rent, sort of in response to thinking about the lack of queer space and also, um, what do they all have to be? Bars? What about, you know, sober people? What about intergenerational queerness? So thinking about a lot of these things and trying to figure out to, how to make a celebratory space where we can all come together as queers and also a, a porous space where our friends who maybe are straight and uh, queer friendly want to be able to hang out with us to create a porous queer space. Um, I was thinking a lot about that and then I was also thinking about um, Jack Halberstam's concept of queer failure is something that really always resonates with me. Um, so taking that on and then also in combination with the fact that I'm often cutting my own hair or cutting my friend's hair, somehow all these things swirling around um, really uh, came to a head and uh, in this project, Barbershop, the Art of Queer Failure. Embracing this ethos in the installation, um, which is a barbershop, um, I give haircuts to people in exchange for an act of queer world making. I'm not a trained barber, so that part they're going to get a haircut that sort of fails, but it's going to have sort of a queer aesthetic. In the space of a barber shop, which sort of fails to be a barber shop, but also has a queer aesthetic, it's got glitter, it's got disco balls, it's uh, covered in um, aluminum foil, like Andy Warhol's factory, it's got leopard and zebra print, it's got you know, sort of culty queer things happen. In exchange for their queer haircut, the participant agrees to carry out some sort of act of queer world making before their haircut grows out. And that is negotiated during uh, the haircut. So we end up having these really lovely, intimate conversations, myself and the person getting the haircut, about perhaps they identify as queer or trans or they are uh, intimately familiar with someone and how can they be an ally? or perhaps they're a cis straight person, but they want to participate and they want to become an ally. And so the conversations really vary from people in elementary school getting haircuts and standing up um, to protect their queer friends uh, to, you know, uh, cis straight people having conversations on behalf of sort of forwarding queer and trans um, knowledge in the broader community, having difficult conversations with family members who might be a bit closed-minded, and I sort of help them, coach them through that. So it's a really lovely exchange that we get to have, and then there's people sort of sitting and watching on the sidelines and listening. But for me, I guess, as an artist, I really enjoy having these intimate conversations and then having them be part of a larger community and have that, that uh, knowledge and critical thinking around identity and representation and gender and sexuality sort of trickle outward through this really playful and really fun um, community space. Like people just kind of, they hear the music playing, they see the disco, they see the party lights, they want to come and they want to hang out. And then sort of under that sort of playful um, aesthetic, we're able to sort of have quite challenging conversations um, about um, queerness and identity.